We all have that one thing that makes us who we are. The one thing that identifies us, that people know us by. We all have that one thing that we do very well and very proud of. But as the saying goes, the only constant in this life is change. You see, change is important for two things. One, for survival. To belong in a market that is heavily saturated, you have to continue to evolve yourself. But secondly, it's a flex. A flex of simply demonstrating to your market, to your audience, that you simply can do it. And in the release of the Forward Experience, Ultra has done exactly that, demonstrating their ability to hang with the best of them. In this review, allow me to take you through a very detailed look at Ultra's forward experience. My name is Aubrey. I'm a very average runner, simply trying to be less average by the day as at the time of filming this, you have given me 8,300 subscribers for which I'm very grateful. But you know, I didn't come to talk to you about that. This is that deviation. This is Ultra's forward experience and I would love for you to join me as we talk through it. Three things you need to know, and the first one is the best thing about the shoe, 130 pounds. And I'm gonna put the dollar equivalent over here. In terms of weight, I wear a nine and a half UK, 255 grams. Now I've had other shoes, daily trainers as reviews being much heavier than that. So that's very much welcome. In terms of the stack height, this is where that deviation I just referred to comes in. You see, Ultra are known for developing shoes that have the same height at the back as well at the front, therefore not having a drop at all, zero drop. Whereas this is 32 at the back, 28 at the front, giving Ultra their debut entry into a non-zero drop shoes with a four mil drop. All right, look, if you're gonna be a really good YouTuber, you have to do some disclosures, right? And my disclosures are as follows. This shoe has been given to me by the Ultra guys. They've been very kind and they're very supportive to my channel. Now that would make you think I'm gonna be a fanboy and therefore say only nice things about the shoe and that's not the case. I'm gonna say a few things that we all need to know about. But first, before I do that, the FOD section. How have I actually tested the shoe to give you guys a credible opinion? Well, let's talk to that now. I'm currently training for a half marathon. So using the runner app, it tells me what workouts I'm gonna be doing. So all of this week's running has been done in the ultra forward experience, giving me a mix of different runs. So I'm gonna put a chart down here for each of the runs that I've been doing. Started with the 1.5 K repeats. That's a very good one. It was a very fast one for my standard. And it kind of shows that it can deal with different paces, okay? Next up, it was a 16K long run, starting with a 5K easy, a very hard 6K, and a 5K cool down. Also tough, but this shoe held its own. I was very impressed. It's expected. It's a daily trainer that it can do the easy paces, but what it's able to do in the faster ones as well, it comes alive, but I've got something to say about the midsole when we come to talk to that. Okay, so next up was the K200s. Essentially, a 1K rest, 200 meters, the 1K fast, the 200 meters even faster, and the shoe held its own, demonstrating its ability to run its paces. But you've got that warm up and the cool down, so it's, it's really, really good with that easy pace. And then just today, I did an AK easy run, zone two. Okay, so let's actually do the review. Starting from the top, working our way down, normal English, nothing jargony or techie. Let's start with the heel. I can't complain. Really good heel, I had a very good lockdown. I've had issues with other shoes where my heel kind of slips in and out of the shoe. I didn't even need to do the runner's knot in all the workouts I've just talked to you about, no issue. That's contributed by two things. I think one, the collar of there and the padding, but it also has additional padding on the inside and it works wonders in getting a good lockdown. Ultra, ultra, listen to me bro, listen, ultra. If you're gonna make a turn, bro, I promise you, gusset that thing, especially in a daily trainer. All the other boys are doing it. I saw the guys in Asics doing it, New Balance are doing it, Nike is doing it, Adidas, on running and doing it. Ultra, bro, come closer, come closer, let me tell you. Gusset this tongue, please. Apart from that, it's a plushy tongue, I like it, and 
at the top of the tongue, you can see that little strip there. You feed the laces through, helps you get that secure uh, lockdown in terms of the tongue. Lacing system, bang, bang, done. It's simple. They've got laces. They've got holes. The holes have been fortified. Ultra well done, and I like what you've done. Let's maintain that. In terms of the laces themselves, they're very standard laces, a flat profile. I didn't have any issues with these. The upper. Here we've got a, a minus and a plus. Now look, when I reviewed the Tour in 7, I said something that I think I'm going to hold to a lot of Ultra's shoes. They are very good shoes, but sometimes they don't look as good as they perform. This is the Lone Peak 7. That screams personality. If I show you the inside, that screams a unique look. And there is something about the Lone Peak 7 that holds its own in terms of performance as well as the look that kind of makes it the flagship ultra shoe. That versus that. Because when you run in this shoe, honestly, I've, I've demonstrated the kind of running I've been doing. The look of this upper doesn't give you the fieriness the performance that this shoe offered me, I would like for Ultra to make it look that way. In terms of performance, let me demonstrate to you. Everywhere you are seeing those lines, uh, the streaks, especially at the toe box over there, those are perforations. The breathability is amazing. And this is my point. Everything I'm going to talk about in terms of the performance of the upper, excellent. Just make it look like it is. Is the toe box. All ultra shoes acknowledge two things in trying, no, let's go to this one, in trying to make you realize they're trying to embrace nature. One is the foot shape. Ultra emulates that foot shape. Sometimes people that watch my videos ask me, oh, will this work for my flat foot? Will it work for my wide foot? I've never had any hesitation recommending any ultra shoe for someone who's got a wide foot. The shape of this toe box from Ultra allows your toes to splay out in a natural way. You see, that's where you get bunions, little corns, and that's because your, your shoe is forcing your foot to behave in a certain way. When you've got an intentionally placed toe box like this, it factors that in. Four millimeter drop caters for other people that may not have considered Ultra before. So let's touch on the material. Now for me, I don't care for techie names. There is a criticism that I've seen in the fact that they haven't gone with their premium or the most comfortable midsole material, the Ego Max. They've gone with a, an EVA foam. Now, I'm just going to be open and honest with you. For me personally, I couldn't care. It runs like a daily trainer should, doing two things. It gives me a very good return of energy. I do enjoy that low drop, but it also is a comfortable daily trainer. I'm someone that suffers from shin splints, and I can tell you very quickly if a shoe is not a comfortable running shoe, and this ain't it. Aesthetically, I also like that on the inside of that midsole, you can see the Ultra logo there. Very nice. I do like the streaks, the lines in the midsole. It is quite uniform with the rest of the shoe. Another thing that we have to focus on in terms of the midsole is this intentional rocker. You look at that shape, that is very intentional. You get to see this shoe come alive when you're doing the fast paces. Now, fast to me might not be fast to most people. Fast to me, when I start going towards that four minute piquet pace, 340, 350, I'm giving it everything. Do you know what? I can't fault this shoe. I prefer a carbon plate for that kind of pace, just for me personally. But for your workouts, your daily training, I can't fault this shoe. It held its own. Right. Turn the shoe over. Outsole time. Excellent. Excellent. I've got no issue whatsoever in terms of the grip. I've got no issues in terms of the resilience that this has. I've shown you the footage of my workouts, all sorts of weather, um, and it held its own. One thing, if you look there, um, I picked out quite a few stones, um, just ready for this review. I should have left them there really, but I picked up a few stones, but genuinely, to be honest with you, it didn't really interfere. It didn't really interrupt, but it'd be, it'd be a miss if I didn't point that out. 
there were a few stones collected in there. So maybe that's something that Ultra can look to improve uh, next time. I also did touch on the lines that you are seeing there. What Ultra is trying to do in that shape is emulate the, the bones in your feet by giving you that. So not only can the shoe give you this kind of flexion, but it can also give you that twist, giving you um, a nimble, agile experience as you're running. It's those intentional touches that make this shoe what it is, as well as any Ultra one, to be fair. And look, if you made it to the end, <laughs> thank you very much. It's sincerely appreciated. Do consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. It will be great to have you on board. And if you want to look at more ultra running reviews, I've got one here and another one over there. Consider checking those out. And I can almost guarantee you there'll be plenty more happening in 2024. And I look forward to seeing you in those.